Okay, now uh, let's talk about the radial basis function networks. So this one is a linear regression with the radial basis functions. Okay. Again, the basis functions are radial or Gaussian kernels. So we already talked about all the equations about these radial basis functions. Okay. So given uh, the data, then we have uh, lots of uh, basis functions and approximation is, is based on the weighted sum of these basis functions. Okay. And the radial basis function network is actually a linear uh, regression, but at the same time, it is a kind of feed forward neural networks with one hidden layer. And in the one hidden layer, uh, the first layer is not trainable. Okay, we just provide the basis functions, and these uh, basis functions are fixed. Okay, and then the upper layer uh, with the parameter w is trainable. And it looks like this, first of all. So the hidden layer does uh, not need a transformation. So from input x, so we apply the nonlinear functions so that we have hidden layer representation. Okay. And this layer is fixed. Okay. The nonlinear function is given. And then from these features, then we uh, multiply this uh, parameter vector to get the output. When we have a multivariate output, then we might have a lot of output nodes. But if we have just a scalar, then we have only one output. Okay, then usually higher dimensional space than the input space. So when the input vector is in the d-dimensional space, then in this hidden uh, representation, we have m nodes and uh, m is higher than uh, d usually. But sometimes we can have a smaller, uh, a smaller dimensional space, but usually higher. And each hidden neuro, uh, neuron responds to a local region of uh, feature space. Okay, so we already talked about this uh, local property of uh, Gaussian uh, function, right? So Gaussian basis function or radial basis function so are local. Okay, so one basis function is in charge of some local locations. Okay. So to match the data distribution, then clustering could be applied. Okay. So if you want, you can use a clustering, but it's not necessary. Okay, so uh, the linear output layer does linear regression. So this part will take care of nonlinear transformation, and then this part will be just a linear regression. Okay, and this one is trainable. Okay, but this neural network, again, this one is a neural network, actually, in a sense. And this one is much faster than multilayer perceptron. In the multilayer perceptron, this part is trainable too, and this part is trainable. So we have a two uh, trainable layers so that it is hard to train multilayer perceptron. But in radial basis function networks, this part is given. So when we have a uh, input x, then we can translate the x to this hidden representations. Okay, then because this one is fixed, and we can train just this layer. So it's just a linear regression. It's really fast. So to train these RBF networks, it takes just. It it doesn't take much time. It takes less than one second okay even when you have a lot of data samples but still just less than one second would be enough most of the time and the number of bases and number of parameters uh, these are hyperparameters right and the larger they are the more flexible the function is but 
If we increase the number of pages and the number of parameters, then there is some possibility. We, we increase the kind of the, the probability to have overfitting problem, as always. And the RBF networks algorithm is really simple. So define the basis functions first. So we have to define the means and variance because RBF is Gaussian functions. Okay. So we have to define means and variances. And if you want, you can uh, use a clustering method to have some uh, uh, basis functions where there are lots of data samples. So we can have a basis functions where there are data samples. So for example, uh, we have this kind of data samples. Then we can have uh, radial basis functions around here. So in that case, maybe three basis functions would be enough to, to represent all the data samples. But usually we don't do this. We use uh, We use a uh, grid approach. We have lots of uh, pages functions like this. We can manually define with lattice and the prior knowledge for the variance. So we can just uh, predefine these things. Or if you want, you can use clustering method. And then now we have a basis function matrix, right? Because we just define the basis functions and then uh, given these data samples, just apply these basis functions. Now we have basis function matrix. Then to learn the weight matrix. When we have uh, multiple outputs, then the weight would be a matrix. If we have just one output variable, then uh, W can be just a vector. Okay, then the simply uh, use a pseudo inverse. That's it. Okay. Then we can predict the output of test data. And that there is a major drawback of RBF networks. RBF centers are not guided by the MSE objective functions. In the previous slide, when we define these basis functions, okay, these uh, basis functions are defined regardless of the objective functions. But in the deep learnings, you know, all the layers are kind of organized to optimize one single uh, objective function. But in RBF networks, the basis functions has nothing to do with uh, the objective functions, right? We just simply define. Even when we use a clustering method, then still, this clustering method has nothing to do with objective functions. So that is one big problem. And uh, we have some nice examples. The first one is a circle in the square. In this square, we have a circle. And we have a lot of samples. And based on these samples, we have to estimate these circles. If we increase the number of samples, then we can increase the, the number of pages functions, then this estimate would be uh, would be close to the actual circle. And we have another uh, example, function approximations. So this the blue curve is the predicted predicted curve and the dotted red curve are just the data samples okay from these data samples we just estimate our estimated function is this blue curve okay so with just the 20 samples we can estimate this function and the msc is quite low but if we increase the number of samples then we can increase the number of pages functions then the msc would be almost zero so in this case, where is the basis functions? We have basis functions like this. 
But if, if it, when we don't have enough samples, then the basis function should be big. Okay. To avoid all feeling problem. And the next one is kernel approach for linear regression. So this one is a, a straightforward application of kernel trick to uh, linear regression when we use a uh, nonlinear function phi. So please refresh your uh, memory about the kernel PCA. So it's quite similar to kernel PCA. So we're gonna do a linear regression after applying a nonlinear function phi on input x. Okay, then this is uh, our uh, loss functions. This one is about the regularization, so you don't have to worry about this part yet. Okay, so after uh, talk, uh, after a learning uh, reg uh, regularizer, then we can get back to this term. But for now, just ignore that. And with uh, this equation, I think we already talked about this term, uh, this equation when we uh, uh, drive the kernel PC, right? So W can be represented by a weighted sum of a nonlinear function phi, okay? Because W should be in the same space. So in this case, we have a, a weight W in the feature space. Okay, so as long as W is in the feature space, then the W could be represented by the weighted sum of a feature vector. Linear regression can be a dual representation. So just simply uh, use uh, this term in place of W here. Then we can simply have this term. Again, this term, uh, you can just ignore this term for now, okay? Then, you know how to apply the kernel trick, right? So, uh, whenever there is an uh, inner product between the feature vector or between the input vectors, then we can use kernel function. Instead of nonlinear function and the inner product, we can just use a kernel function. So, uh, with these color functions, then uh, this inner product uh, can be replaced by this curl. So, our objective function can be rewritten with this term. Again, this one is regularization term. So, for now, you can just ignore that. Okay, then uh, take a derivative and set it to zero, then alpha is, without this term, alpha is k inverse t. So given a, a new point x, then y of x is the transpose uh, phi of x. Okay, so this one is the exactly same as kernel PC. When we have a mapping, then given a new data point, then we could, uh, project the new sample to the y space right so likewise exactly we can apply the same equation so double transpose transpose uh, phi of x can be rewritten like this then there is the inner product here so uh, we can get this result